Glory of Lizard by Blacks. Tyler Perry, it's so great to meet you. I'm, I'm delighted. <laughs> Good to meet you too, Gloria. So, what part, we'll what part right of Canada are you in? I'm in Toronto. Toronto, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So within the joy and hilarity, there are strange truths and history and tragedy and some serious social commentary as well. Uh, the gay couple is central, the policewoman with relatives, the BLM t-shirt, the normalcy of gunshot sounds, and you make this really funny. How hard was it to write in those social complexities into this uh, film? You know, I didn't want, what I didn't want to do is make light of them or make fun of them, but, but I definitely wanted to address them, especially the moment where Medea says, I don't know all the answers, but I know nothing's going to happen until we sit down and talk. I, I wanted to have, to drop some sort of nuggets on either side of these things, and, and that's where it all came from. But yeah, I, I, I also I just wanted to be respectful of the times and what we're going through while I'm making everybody laugh. So, so all of those things rolled into one turned out to be a Medea homecoming. Amazing, thanks. Uh, so Brendan Carroll's Mrs. Brown uh, um, makes an appearance. That's a really happy meeting. The resonance between the two characters is great. Like they, they come from the same com comedic ethos. So how did that come about? Our career started almost uh, simultaneously. He was in Europe. I was in America. I didn't. I had no idea what he was doing. He didn't know I was doing plays in America. And uh, I was working with a movie called Brain on Fire. And the director, Gerard Barrett, I think it was, he said, have you ever heard of Mrs. Brown? And he put us, he showed me some clips. I was like, whoa. So I called him up. It's like, we've got to do something. And here we are. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really great stuff. And uh, yeah, you both have your niche, right? It's, yeah. you know, finding your niche and so on and uh, a like-minded audience for both of you. So uh, was the idea to kind of, uh, I noticed that you're marketed in Nigeria, United Arab, Arab Emirates, South Africa, a little bit in South America. Was the idea to kind of get out of that into Europe and Ireland and Iran or wherever? Well, yeah, right, right. <laughs> you, yeah, you were watching. <laughs> i tell you the beauty of, of having a platform like, like Netflix <laughs> is everyone in the world who has Netflix can see it. So that's what was really, really exciting for me. and. And to when you're taking that kind of stage, I wanted to in, to bring in someone else who has Europe, uh, you know, as I don't. So to come together to be able to make that happen, I think was uh, it's going to be pretty special. Fantastic. So I've seen a lot of your stuff. You write for drama. You write thrillers. And I've noted that uh, throughout a lot of your work, there's a deep understanding of women, like Single Moms Club and uh, for Color Girls. Like, where does that deep understanding come from? 100% my mother and growing up a little boy at my mother's apron and my sisters and my aunt and being a, a boy male child around all of these women all the time. I got a pretty clear understanding of, of a lot of things that they were going through and how they handled them. So I wanted to be uh, in the in these moments as I'm writing this movie subconsciously my first 10 movies I was speaking to my mother. So at this point I just wanted to to continue to do what has always worked and what I've always known and my audience is largely all my career has been African American women. Okay. So uh, the acting roles that you choose, uh, whether you wrote the script or not, and how you play them, I see this idea of mentorship, bring on fire, falling from grace. It's a, it's a very similar character who's like coaching and bringing some young woman along. And I feel that you have a desire to teach. What is the most important thing you wish to impart uh, through your work? Wow, that's really, that's really a great Great uh, question. I, I, you know, at this point, I've got so many people that are working for me, so many young, uh, talented kids that are coming up under me. I'm just hoping that I'm setting an example that whatever you want to do, you can, and nobody can stop you if you believe in yourself and you work really, really hard. So that's the example that I'm hoping I'm setting for many. Yeah. Yeah, something comes through a lot about your personal values and the choices, right, that you make. Mm. So have you ever accepted a role where you didn't, that didn't fit your values? No, no, I wouldn't. Uh, and I've been offered some things. I was, there was one uh, uh, recently that I was offered that I was like, there's absolutely no way I'm doing that because I, because I feel like as an actor, you have to call things into your life. You have to tap for, for, into your reserves of things that you have been through to be able to express whatever the character's going through. And some things I just didn't want to call in. Mm -hmm. is, is the advice for actors to write their own material like you did or, or just like call in, as you say? No, some actors are great at, at taking on any role. They can embody any of those roles, and which I think is awesome. But for me, it's kind of hard to shake a character after I'm done with it. So if it's if it's a dark and violent person, then I'm out. Okay, okay. So uh, Medea Homecoming, your actor, director, producer, 
she's beautifully dressed and coiffed. You're a big man. You look fantastic. You look hot. So how long does it take you to get to that? Medea is only about an hour now. We got it down to about an hour. Joe is the one that takes several hours to do. I start him very early in the morning to get him ready. He's the he's the pain in the butt, but he's he's the most fun for me. Okay. And so uh, I thought you'd done like a farewell tour. Yeah. Um, and now you're back. Yeah. I, I felt a little bit of perhaps um, fatigue with the character. Like uh, Mr. Brown says, you know, I went to hell and Medea was there. Yeah, so, that's right. So that's right. <laughs> why, yeah. why, why are you doing one now, another one? Just the state of the world. I, 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 you know, I've thought, what do you have to make people laugh, make people feel good? So I pulled this out of my toolbox, and, and that's the whole point. I just, I, with this pandemic, with all we've gone through with politics, with division, blocking bridges, you know, all of these things that are going on, can we just <laughs> laugh and have a good time for a minute? So that's, that's, what, that's what's important. Yeah, you heard the news from Canada then. Oh, yeah, everywhere. It's everywhere. Okay. Uh, so um, your film studio, um, I've heard really good things about it as in, in terms of a place that people uh, thrive. What are you doing differently from other businesses? I'm, with me being, you know, the head guy and being arm in arm, side by side with my crew, you know, former prisoners, people who've been through all kinds of things, it gives me a, a different insight. I get to see firsthand what everybody's dealing with and going through. And I think that that makes a difference because I'm right there with them, shoulder to shoulder. Amazing. Okay, so um, this film we know will be successful. It's going to be seen in, in new venues as well. Um, I know that you're not resting on your laurels. So what else is up your sleeve? What's next? I've, I just finished a movie, uh, Jazzman's Blues, uh, which will be on Netflix. Uh, and that I wrote in 95, and I finally get a chance to do it. I'm really excited about it. So that's what's next. Okay, and last question. I know you're from uh, the American South, from New Orleans. You had a challenging upbringing, and uh, um, now you're doing extraordinarily well, obviously, um, starting from your first play in 1992, uh, which took a fair bit of time to launch. Who are the key, what are the key incidents and the key people who allowed you to stay this path? Uh, you know, for me, my mother was one who instilled faith in God and, and, and prayer in my life. And had it not been for her, I would not still be on this path because she told me how hard how good it is to work hard and see see the fruits of your labor. So that's that's where I am. I, I, I owe it all to her. Amazing. Thank you. Those are all my questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Nice Take to meet care. you. Stay warm. Yeah. Bye bye.